You could argue that out of all of the animals that walk this earth today, no story is going to be more interesting than the polar bears over the next few decades. Their old way of life is becoming harder and harder to live with the melting of sea ice, and they're at a stage where they need to adapt or it's possible that they could disappear. It's almost like the bears are aware of the peril that they're in, because as the years have gone by we've seen a massive increase of strange polar bear behaviour, and they seem to be taking more risks out of desperation. In today's video we'll be taking a look at a few different ways that the polar bear's life could change in the coming years, and how a rapidly changing climate could affect them and the animals that they share their ecosystem with. We have a lot to get through so I'll stop blabbering, and the first topic that we'll be covering is quite a scary one for the polar bear. If you watch wildlife videos on YouTube then you might have noticed the influx of AI content, and this is not only lazy but it also spreads misinformation. Believe it or not, there's never been a documented case of an orca hunting a polar bear, but you don't have to look for long to find videos claiming that they do, and these videos usually include AI footage of polar bears being hunted by orcas. You can understand why the channels do this as it's such an interesting predator-prey relationship that remains a mystery, and it fascinates many of us around the world. If you put the AI videos aside, this is actually a topic that could see some developments in the future, and it's all because of the warming of the planet. You'd assume that because polar bears inhabit the same areas as many of the animals that they usually hunt, an orca must have come across a polar bear in the water at some point, and it's possible that it might have taken a bite out of it. The main reason why we have little evidence of interactions between these species is simply because they don't come across each other that often. Orcas prefer to hunt in areas where the sea ice isn't as concentrated, and there are far more mammal-eating orcas in Antarctica versus the Arctic. The chances are, if you've seen a documentary where orcas are hunting seals on ice, it was in Antarctica, and even though mammal-eating orcas do exist in the Arctic, they are much rarer. With the world warming and the sea ice diminishing a little more year on year, polar bears and orcas could start to inhabit the same areas more frequently, and it would be interesting to see how they interact. Now as we've been through many times on the channel before, orcas are a little fussy about what they eat. They tend to only hunt what they've been taught to when they're young, and they are inquisitive yet cautious about strange animals that they haven't encountered before. This is one of the many reasons why they haven't killed a human in the wild, and it could mean that polar bears would be off the menu. Even though polar bears are incredible swimmers with one individual swimming 687 kilometers over nine days, they usually don't spend too much time in the water and they are usually close to the safety of land or sea ice. This means that they could escape if they noticed the approaching danger, but if they were caught way out at sea they could be in trouble. Now some people have debated the topic of if a polar bear could fight back or even hunt orcas as they have proven to be able to hunt belugas, but I'm not going to waste your time because if they met in the wild there's no doubt that the orca would win the fight. Strangely there have been studies that suggest that polar bears might actually benefit from sharing more of their territory with orcas, and this is all because of how wasteful orcas are. Because orcas are easily the most formidable and successful apex predators in our oceans, they have the luxury of not needing to eat the entirety of their prey. They often choose to eat the tastiest and most nutritious parts of the animals that they kill, with them only eating the livers of great white sharks and the blubber and tongues of bowhead whales. This means that when they leave their kills there's usually quite a lot of meat left behind, and the polar bears are more than happy to feed on the orcas scraps. As the sea ice melts, the polar bears have started to come across and eat these discarded kills more often, and the lack of sea ice also makes it easier for the orcas to hunt the bowhead whales. At the moment this seems like great news for the bears, but bowhead whale populations around Greenland and Svalbard are in peril, so this bountiful period might not last long. We'll have to see how this story develops in the future, because really we have little evidence to help us predict how these animals would react to meeting one another, and if the orca's presence will positively or negatively affect the polar bears. If hunting on sea ice becomes harder and harder for the polar bear, one of the most obvious solutions would be to move on to land. Now at different times of the year, polar bears will move on to islands and continental land masses in search of food, and this exposes them to a whole new group of animals. Even though it may seem strange at first, polar bears will occasionally hunt terrestrial mammals such as reindeer, with one polar bear nicknamed the Grinch being very famous for doing so. 
Hunting terrestrial prey and possibly moving further south could be a possible way for the polar bears to thrive, but they would face competition from a close relative. The brown bear is the polar bear's closest living relative, and they are so closely related in fact that they can actually hybridize. Unlike most other hybrid animals, growler or pizzly bears occur both in captivity and in the wild, and if more polar bears move south then they could become a more common sight. What makes these hybrids even more distinctive is the fact that they are actually fertile, so in hundreds or maybe thousands of years it might be hard to find a polar bear without any brown bear DNA. One thing that might hold the polar bear back is the fact that it's the only bear species that's not an omnivore, with almost all of their diets consisting of meat. This shouldn't be too much of a surprise as there aren't really any plants that exist in the harsher parts of the Arctic, but when on land they have been witnessed eating plant matter such as berries. It's possible that they could adapt to feed on plant matter more frequently, and there are a few large terrestrial mammals that they'd be great at hunting. Polar bears have shown us that they are great at hunting where the water meets the land, and there are a few animals across North America and Eurasia that they could target in these zones. One of the most interesting relationships that they could form would be with the moose, as these giants spend a lot of their time in the water and it's possible that the polar bear would be able to hunt them both on land and in the water. There are a few other semi-aquatic animals that they'd also be interested in, but it's possible that they wouldn't need to change their diets too much at all. There are plenty of beaches further south that have similar prey to what they're used to across their native range, and there are even new species that they could target such as sea otters and sea lions. There are also freshwater seals that have a relatively easy life without the threat of marine predators, and their peace would be shattered by the arrival of a new apex predator. Freshwater seals such as the Lake Baikal seal are only really hunted by brown bears near the shore, which is often why they choose to rest on islands and rocks. If the polar bears were able to make it to this lake then the seals would be in serious trouble, as they'd simply have nowhere to hide. They are already known to hunt in ways that would be effective in this situation, such as when they charge at walruses on busy beaches. Lake Baikal is one of the largest and the deepest freshwater lake in the world, and in the colder months it freezes over. When this happens, many of the seals actually rest on the floating ice in parts of the lake that are still swimmable, and hunting the seals that are on this ice wouldn't be too different from what they're used to across their native range. Now this lake wouldn't be able to support a massive polar bear population, but the Lake Baikal seals have a pretty healthy population of around 80,000 to 100,000, which is thought to be around the capacity that the lake can support. This doesn't really compare to the seal populations in the Arctic though, as seals are one of those groups of animals that have surprisingly large populations, with harp seals having an estimated population of around 7 to 10 million globally. The thought of polar bears invading ecosystems where they don't belong seems a bit unlikely in the short term, and studies have shown us that some populations are doing the exact opposite. Some polar bears have been heading further north to follow the receding sea ice, and it might be naive in the first place to think that polar bears could survive on terrestrial prey alone, as they're classified as marine mammals because of their reliance on marine ecosystems. They are still a relatively new species, having evolved from brown bears around 600,000 to 500,000 years ago, so maybe it's possible for them to adapt to a more brown bear way of living, and recent evidence shows us that they might be altering their DNA to survive these difficult times. Some polar bears in southeastern Greenland were discovered to have some genes relating to heat stress, aging, and metabolism behaving differently, and scientists think that this is a direct response to rising temperatures. This could mean that they are already rapidly changing to find a solution to a warming planet, and it'll be interesting to see where this story goes in the future. You'll have to let me know what you think down below. Can the polar bear adapt to a more terrestrial way of living, or can they only survive on their current diet of blubber rich marine mammals. Possibly the worst and scariest way for the polar bears to survive is to hang around and search for food in human inhabited areas. This is a terrifying reality for many people who live in the Arctic Circle, as polar bears have taken over islands and invaded towns in the past. Earlier on this year, polar bears were found to be living in an abandoned Arctic weather station, and back in 2019 over 50 polar bears invaded a Russian island in search of food. Bizarre cases such as these are becoming more common as the bears become more desperate, and as we've covered in a recent video, this also results in an increase in polar bear cannibalism. 
We humans are pretty wasteful animals, and this is why so many adaptable species live among us and take advantage of the food that we leave behind. The American black bear is possibly the best at doing this out of all of the bear species, with them being capable of living in even built-up areas. Unfortunately, unlike the American black bear, polar bears often view humans as a food source, so it would be very bad news if these apex predators started to move into areas with large human populations. One town that often has to deal with this problem is Churchill, Canada, with polar bears sometimes walking in its streets in search of an easy meal. Thankfully, the residents have come up with different ways to try and keep people safe from the bears, such as sometimes keeping their cars unlocked so that people can enter them if they see a bear nearby, or by putting problem bears in polar bear jail. When problem bears loiter around the town or try to get into people's homes, they are sedated and then taken to polar bear jail. Here they are held without food for up to 30 days, with reoccurring offenders having a longer jail sentence. After they have served their time, they are then transported a long way away from town, and this is meant to act as a deterrent or to hopefully change their behaviour. So far, it seems to be pretty effective, which is important for the bears because at the moment, the only other alternative is to shoot them. Because of the many bear attack tragedies in the past, you can understand why people in Arctic communities are worried. And because they are way more likely to attack people than the American black bear, it's very unlikely that they'll be able to peacefully coexist with humans around human inhabited areas. It is possible that they could take advantage of our waste away from towns and cities, such as looking for food at garbage dumps, or by looking for scraps around fishing vessels and harbours. There are many animals that currently do this and manage to stay mostly out of the way, so even though it's not likely, it is possible. I feel like out of all of the polar bears' options, moving closer to humans is the worst, and hopefully this doesn't happen in the future. Now this final section of the video is just a bit of fun, but personally I find it a very interesting topic to think about. As I'm sure the vast majority of you already know, polar bears are found up here and not down here. If one especially determined polar bear managed to get down here, it's more than likely that they would succeed and this could cause massive problems. They'd be able to hunt the seals down here despite the fact that they wouldn't have seen the majority of them before. And of course, there are some feathery residents here that would be terrified of this apex predator. Penguins have enough on their plate as it is, as they already need to face formidable predators such as orcas and leopard seals. These two predators can best the penguins in the water, but they usually manage to escape by heading onto land or onto ice. If the polar bear somehow managed to make it to Antarctica, then the penguins really wouldn't have anywhere to go, as their usual predators mean that the water is always perilous, and on land, the polar bear would have no difficulty catching a handful at a time. Of course, it wouldn't all be plain sailing for them, because as we've already covered, there are more mammal-eating orcas down here, and as they go for the same prey, they could meet on a regular basis. After a few encounters, the orcas could start to see the polar bears as a possible food source, and this really wouldn't end well for them. It would also be fascinating to witness what would happen if they were to meet a leopard seal, as this encounter would be completely alien for both species. The leopard seals would never have seen a bear in their lives, and the bears would never have met a seal that's willing to fight back as much as the leopard seal. Unless it's a particularly large leopard seal, it's hard to see a victor apart from the polar bear, but leopard seals are rarely very far away from the water, so it's likely that they'd be able to escape. They'd also find another source of prey on islands such as South Georgia Island, because not only are there massive numbers of king penguins here, but there are also southern elephant seals. The southern elephant seal is the largest pinniped in the world, and it's really hard to get across how massive the males can become. Some of the largest pinnipeds that polar bears come across in their native range are walruses, and these mammals max out at around 2 metric tons. The southern elephant seals completely dwarf their northern relatives, as some of the largest males can weigh up to 5 metric tons. A seal of this size would simply be too much for a polar bear to handle, especially because they're very well versed in combat too. They could still probably take advantage of the young and the females, but with the males nearby, they'd always have to watch their backs. It's interesting to think of these scenarios, but as I said, it's just a bit of fun, as it's almost impossible for this to happen, and if it did, it's likely that the polar bears would be relocated. I'm pretty sure this video is going to come out after Christmas, so if that's the case, I hope you've had a lovely time, and I hope you have a happy new year too.
That's about it for this video. Thank you for watching and thank you for all of the support this year. And until next time, goodbye. Thank you.